I haven't been abroad for about two years and given traveling is a massive part of many people's lives, I wanted to understand if traveling makes you happy. So I've decided to hop on a plane and get traveling. Let's do it. Title, three weeks earlier. So I've been doing some research on what the science says when it comes to linking travel with happiness. And there's a number of things that pique my interest. There's sort of three key themes when it comes to this. One is to do with what you're spending your money on and, and the spending of money on travel or experiences. The second is the anticipation of the trip. And the third is the experience itself of traveling. Now, Cornell professor, Dr. Thomas Gilovich, suggests that spending money on travel or more broadly experiences is much better for our happiness and our well-being than spending it on material goods. There's even an argument to say that a bad travel experience is more worthwhile than a good material purchase because it's a story to be told in the future. And really, whether good or bad, it means that spending money on traveling can mean spending money on a human bonding experience. Let's be real, would you rather talk to someone about their new TV or their recent trip across Peru? It's obvious, isn't it? And that's what's so great about the idea of spending money on travel as opposed to a material good. This theme of spending money on travel as opposed to spending it on materials is sort of made much more clear when you think about comparing the two. It's much, much easier to compare a material good with what somebody else has than to compare a travel experience. It's also been proving that this comparison factor is negatively correlated with four different measures of well-being, showing that really that comparison factor is really detrimental to us. So once you've hit pay and got your wallet out and done all the sort of stressful bit of actually booking it, you get a happiness boost from the pre-trip anticipation, the excitement of knowing you're going away. And it's even more so if you've booked a trip that you know is going to be non-stressful. But it's worth pointing out that this does fade after the trip, so it's a short-term boost, but it's not something you necessarily get with a material good. Just to really hammer home the point, 97% of respondents to a survey said they felt happier and had better well-being after booking a trip. And that's even before you've gone. Once you're on the trip, you get the happiness boost from experiential diversity. The fact you're doing different things with your day-to-day -day life and not just the same old, same old. This is because there's increased hippocampus and striatum activity, which are the novelty and reward centers of the brain. And you can get that from just traveling around your home country and just making sure you're doing different things with your day-to-day -day life. It doesn't have to be travel, but there is a study that showed that going over 75 miles away from your home regularly can increase your happiness by up to 7%. Looks like I need to book a trip. Once again, good afternoon and welcome aboard this KLM City Offer Flight towards Amsterdam. I like flying. I even quite like airports once you're beyond security. It escalates the anticipation of the trip and then on touchdown, the excitement really takes hold. Going somewhere you've never been means you can experience another culture and really understand how your life differs from wherever you are. The architecture, the people, the constant fear of being hit by a bike. Amsterdam, despite only being an hour away on a plane, was a big shift from the usual experiences I have at home. Exploring the city was eye-opening. I guess it takes a while to get used to the magic mushroom shops and the accessibility of weed, I mean coffee. But even just exploring the streets, local markets and more gives you a positive buzz, while also removing any stress that might have been caused by being at work instead. Or maybe that was all from that cake I ate. Regardless, there is one more thing I wanted. A non-stereotypical, truly Dutch experience. And I arrived just at the right time. King's Day is the celebration of the King of the Netherlands' birthday on the 27th of April every year. 
People put on their best orange outfit, take to the streets or canals, and, well, party. So, that's what we did. Well, friend I met along the way, I do talk in my videos, and after all of this travelling, I'm really grateful that I was able to do it. To be honest, it was just really nice to get abroad, having not done it for a couple of years. The most important thing, though, for me, and however cringy it may sound, was that I was able to see friends that I haven't seen for a long, long time. And I was also just generally able to get away from the stresses of day-to-day -day life, the sort of monotonous slog, work and all things like that. So that's one of the things that really stuck out to me as something that travel can get you away from and the way it can make you happier. It does make you really want to go elsewhere and generally it showed me how accessible traveling actually is with the ability to compare flights and make sure that realistically you're not spending too much money doing it and the ability to go and stay other places with friends and that social side of things is definitely something that will make people happier it's one of the sort of key pillars of of what makes people happy and so the two things just sort of go hand in hand so maybe it's time for me to stop spending my money on beer overpriced food and material things and start jet setting that little bit more but the key question is do i feel happier having done a bit of traveling and yes i'd say i do then I got aggressively ill, left my laptop in Amsterdam, had to fly back, overly stressed myself out, and ultimately left myself completely wrecked with no rest. And I'm still happier. Well, at least it's a story.